Okay, let's talk about one of the easiest things that you'll do in math, and that is multiply fractions. So, of course, with uh, fractions, you have to know how to multiply, and that's what this uh, video is going to be focused on. But once you learn how to multiply, then you can divide. This is takes an additional step, but basically, the division of fractions, what we do is just change uh, that problem into a multiplication problem. And then, of course, we have addition and subtraction which are operations you're going to need to know how to deal with fractions. These are a little bit more involved. So if you are uh, struggling in any of this stuff, I'm going to give you some suggestions uh, as we go through this video. But here is a basic problem. And if you want to go ahead and pause the video, just quickly think about, hey, can I do this? Do I remember how to do this? We all learned how to multiply fractions. But the idea is, uh, do you remember? Okay, so we're going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, if you are one of these uh, uh, people that don't uh, really don't think they're good in math, maybe your self-image of yourself is, I've just been, you know, bad at math for years. I failed math, so therefore I must be, you know, bad at math and I need to steer clear of it. Or maybe you're frustrated in uh, math currently because, you know, whatever reason, you know, maybe you're not getting enough math instruction or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style. I'm just here to tell you everyone can be successful in math. So even if you haven't done well uh, in uh, the past, I could help you out. Now, I've been teaching math for decades and my approach to math is a little bit different because I really work on students' mindsets. And I'm here to tell you, one, if you have the desire and you're willing to work towards learning mathematics, that can help you out. I really break things down in a clear and understandable manner. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in mathematics, you definitely want to check out my math uh, uh, program to help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, uh, Accuplace or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I have excellent test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my um, comprehensive homeschool math courses and curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes. If you want great grades in mathematics, you must learn how to take great math notes. So start improving your notes and you'll see your grades increase right along. All right, so Let's take a look at this uh, problem, two-thirds, <coughs> excuse me, times uh, four-fifths. Now, one thing you do not want to do, right? Some of you are like, oh, fractions. This might be your expression. You know, it'd be like, oh, I don't want to deal with fractions. Why can't we just deal with nice, easy numbers? Well, fractions are pretty common, uh, you know, forms of numbers, and we're going to have to deal with them. One thing that you don't want to do, okay, is uh, be like so afraid of fractions that you go into your calculator and you turn this into a decimal. You go, oh, two divided by three, you get that decimal, and you go four divided by five, you get that decimal, and then you use your calculator as some sort of, you know, uh, workaround. Now you um, put that calculator away because oftentimes, you know, uh, what I'm gonna be teaching here applies to algebraic situations. In other words, like A over B times C over D. Of course, you can't uh, put this into your calculator and get decimal equivalents, right? So we just need to know how to multiply fractions, and it's not that difficult. So let's get right to it. And again, if you uh, know the answer to this um, question, right, two-thirds times four-fifths, put that into the comment section because I'm going to answer it right now. Okay, so what do we do here? Well, let's just get some basic definitions down. When we're talking about fractions, the top number is called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator, okay? So in this particular fraction, two is the numerator, three is the denominator, and over here, four is the numerator, and five is the denominator. So uh, the way we multiply fractions is we simply, let me just do this a little bit better, we simply multiply the respective numerators, okay, and the respective denominators. So in this case, we're gonna multiply two and four, so that'll be two times four, over three times five, okay? So you can see here, I'm multiplying the numerators over the denominators, and uh, when I do this, I'm gonna get my answer. So two times four is a cor uh, course eight, and then we have three times five is 15. And that is the final answer. Now let's just talk real quick about uh, the result of multiplying two fractions, okay? 
when you're doing this, you always want to end up with your most simplified, reduced fraction. So that's really, really important. So uh, we'll do a couple uh, practice problems here, and I'll talk about you know how we can kind of do this as we uh, work the problem. But you know, right now, let's just make sure we understand how to multiply fractions. Okay, just multiply the respective numerators and denominators, and simplify and reduce, and you are done. So if you remember this and got this answer right without being lucky, well, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and an A plus and a 100% for this particular problem. All right, let's move on to some practice problems now. All right, we'll just do these one step at a time. We'll do problems one and two. You could say I have problems three. Actually, let me just show you problems one, two, and three. I have one more down here. We'll leave that here uh, for a second. So... If you want to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, boy, my my voice was crackling up there. Maybe it's because of all these videos I've, I've been doing lately. But anyways, that's not going to let me uh, uh, stop the video. Let's proceed. So here we have uh, three practice problems, uh, three halves times one-six, nine-tenths times two-thirds, and then five-and-a-half times one and two-thirds. Go ahead and pause the video, get a piece of paper out, a pencil, and knock out uh, these uh, prompts real quick. This is the best use of this video. If you're watching this video and you really want to, you know, understand how to uh, multiply fractions, it's not enough just to watch me do a problem and be like, okay, now I know. No, you got to practice this stuff. So let's go ahead and practice this. And of course, number three has a little bit of a twist to it. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, so uh, hopefully you pause the video and did these problems. Let's get right to it. So we have uh, three halves times one six. So what do we do? Well, here uh, we have our, these fractions, what we call uh, uh, improper. This one's called an improper fraction, and this one's called a proper fraction. But basically what you need to know is that we only have one numerator and one denominator, one numerator and de one denominator. So the result, again, we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So it's going to be 3 times 1 over 2 times 6. Of course, that's going to be 3 over uh, 12. Now, Looking at 3 over 12, my question to you is, can that be reduced? Okay, yes, it can be. 3 goes into 12 how many times? 4, so this is 1 fourth. This is the final answer. Okay, so we got that. Very good. Now, let's take a look at how uh, you could do this, um, uh, kind of cross-cancel some factors. So some of you out there might be like, okay, 3 goes into 6 two times. Okay, you, this will probably you'll probably remember this from school. And then you're like, okay, that's 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. All right, so you can kind of cross-cancel factors, but I didn't want to introduce that uh, because we, um, I want you to really make sure you just understand how to multiply fractions. And then you can just deal with this fraction and reduce it to its final form. Okay, but if you're comfortable cross-canceling factors, go ahead and do so. So let's take a look at this problem. We have 9 tenths times 2 thirds. So again, uh, we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 9 times 2 is, of course, 18. And then 10 times uh, 3 is 30. Now, I can reduce this, and this is uh, reducible. But let's take a look at our factors here, OK? So let's say, OK, 3 here goes into 9 how many times? These are factors. This is being separated by multiplication. So 3 goes into 9, 3. And 2 goes to 10, 5. Okay, so 2 goes into 10, 5. So is our answer 3 fifths? It is. But let's let's work on that real quick. I'm going to put this over here. And let's just look at um, how we would reduce this uh, fraction here. So you'll look at 18 and 30 and think about this for a couple, you know, uh, some uh, seconds. You'll be like, okay, what number goes into 18 and 30? You're like, 2 goes into this. 3 goes into this. Oh, 6 goes into both. Okay, so 6 goes into 18 three times, and then 6 goes into 30 five times. So uh, that's a separate discussion on how to reduce fractions, but you definitely need to know how to simplify and reduce fractions by cross-canceling like factors. But you can see here, if, um, if you're good enough at it, you could just cross-cancel all the factors and get your final answer right there. Okay, so let's move uh, move on to this uh, third problem, and we'll deal with this fourth problem here in a second. So how do we multiply uh, mixed number fractions? Okay, so we have five and one-half times one and two-thirds. Well, what we're going to need to do 
is to convert these mixed number of fractions into improper fractions. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, if you recall, we're going to take this little uh, denominator right here with this one half. We're going to multiply it by five. So that's two times five, which is 10. And then we're going to add one. All right. So two times five is 10. 10 plus one is 11. And then we put it over this denominator right here. So uh, I'm going to be doing a, a separate video and I've done many videos on how to uh, change a mixed number of fractions to improper fractions. But most of you probably remember that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this fraction. So three times one is three plus two is five. Okay, so that's going to be five over three. Now let's take a look at uh, our problem here. Okay, can we do any cross canceling of factors? Does three go into 11? Does three go into five? Nope. Three does not go into 11. Does two go into five? Nope. So none of this, um, none of these factors can uh, cross cancel. So when we do our final product here, okay, remember we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators, we're not going to be able to reduce. Okay, so 11 times 5, of course, is 55, and then 2 times 3 is 6, and that is your final answer. Now, here's the one thing that you don't want to do. Now, a lot of you are going to feel compelled to take this improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. In other words, you're going to go 6 goes into 55, and you're going to start working this out. Okay, do not do this. Don't turn this into a mixed number fraction like this. Um, kind of voluntarily. Now, if your teacher asks you uh, to do that, then go ahead and do so. Or if you need to do that because you need to recognize it on some sort of test, do that. But the main idea is uh, uh, when you do this, I've seen this thousands of times where a student will have the right answer. They'll go to convert this into a mixed number of fraction and make a mistake. And then they uh, deliver to the teacher the wrong answer. Well, in fact, they had the right result. So just make sure your answer is fully simplified and you'll be good to go. All right, so if you got that right, then that's excellent as well. And now let's go ahead and throw an additional twist to uh, multiplying fractions. And that is if we uh, introduce positive and negative number values. So as you uh, progress, I don't know what level you're at, maybe you're at the more of the basic elementary level math, but as you go into middle school and high school especially, you're gonna be dealing with positive and negative numbers, but the rules don't really change what we do have to do is just keep in mind what is going to be the sign of our answer. So this is multiplication, and we're multiplying a negative number times a negative number. So what is that? Well, a negative times a negative is going to be positive. So once you recognize this is going to be a positive um, result, then just kind of don't worry about the signs, okay? Just go ahead and uh, work on the actual problem itself. So let's go ahead and do it both ways. Uh, we'll go two times one, which of course is two. Eight times two is 16. And I can reduce this as one eighth. So that is the final answer, positive one eighth. Or I can um, uh, go ahead and cross cancel these factors. Two goes in this to one, and I'll left with one over eight. Uh, again, one eighth, positive one eighth is the final answer. Okay, if you got all these right and you're like, yeah, this video was easy for me. Well, then listen, I must go ahead and give you a good old 1984 flat top haircut with an A plus and a few uh, stars to make you feel extra special today. Nice job. Okay, now I would say these are pretty introductory level type of problems, but multiplying um, fractions, as you can see here, is pretty easy. Okay, what is um, difficult uh, for students is remembering not to confuse uh, multiplication with division, you know, addition and subtraction. And, and the only way you're going to be able to remember this stuff is through practice. But you want to practice the right way, okay? Watching math, watching me do math, is not the same as you practicing problems. So if you don't practice and follow through, well, this is going to, you're going to remember this for maybe like, you know, 30 minutes and then it's going to go away. But um, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. And I uh, told you I was going to give you some suggestions on um, other fraction topics like addition, subtraction, and division. Uh, so a couple things. Um, one, hopefully you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I have tons of uh, videos on fractions. Matter of fact, I have some of my top videos in the millions of views are on fractions. So there's a lot of people looking for fraction help. Uh, so uh, check out those videos. But two, I have a uh, two courses I would recommend of mine. 
one being pre-algebra, which has a full chapter on fractions. But if you even want to go more basic than that, I have a foundations, math foundations course that I go through even basic arithmetic, basic uh, you know, addition, division, multiplication numbers, much more basic and uh, fractions as well. So those are two additional options. But um, either way, uh, please take advantage of my content that I post on YouTube if you like my teaching style. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.